Okay, so this is now a video about uh, another sort of face mask uh, to go into the uh, CPAP ward. So uh, Luke Howard, uh, thanks for showing us how to use this. What, what is this technology, Luke? So this is called a powered air uh, purifying respirator or something like that, PAPR for, for short. Uh, as you can see, we've got 12 of these lined up here, uh, all charging. Uh, and uh, if you can see under here, it's a, uh, you wear it around your waist, here's the belt, uh, and there's a filter here, uh, which um, if you can see in there, uh, draws air through at 180 litres a minute, uh, and then um, pumps that out through the hood, um, which is here, which has got a, a tube uh, that will connect up to this. Uh, so it fi filters the air, and uh, passes it over your head at the rate of 180 litres a minute uh, and vents out through um, this port uh, here. So there's, uh, there's uh, in theory, no need to, to wear a mask or, or goggles, uh, and it's uh, therefore comfortable to use over a prolonged period of time. Okay, so Luke, so you've got your uh, surgical hood on, which is going to stay on. Um, you've just taken your ordinary face mask off so you can put this on. Mm -hmm. um, well, I'm staring at this board here, which is completely blank. Uh, what's the purpose? So, of course, what we don't want to happen is that you put one of these devices on and they run out of charge uh, after a couple of hours. They have eight hours of charge in them and they take about 12 hours to charge. And you can see that the green, the light turns green when they're fully charged. But the idea is that when you take one out, you'll date it and time it and sign for it. Uh, and then when you bring it back, uh, you'll also put um, the date and time return. So you know how long it was used for uh, uh, and therefore, um, what order you pick up your the, the, the next um, device uh, in. Okay. The other thing we need to take into account is that these filters um, uh, will probably last, we've been told about 28 days if you are assuming you're using them for eight hours a day. So we need to keep a log of these filters and how much they've been used um, over the course of time. But you can also uh, use a flow meter to check the flow through the filters. Uh, Often they're used for, for dusty environments and therefore what you're able to do is as they clog up, the flow will drop as you turn it on, but we're not anticipating dust, so we'll have to go uh, really by duration. Okay, so look, why don't you show us how you're going to put this on? So you've chosen not to put goggles on uh, because I think they might steam up anyway. Yeah. Uh, so I think that's very reasonable. And no additional face mask either because this is supposed to serve the purpose of the mask with 180 litres a minute. Yeah. Although I suppose if you were going to be belt and braces, you might put a mask on as well. Do you think it's worthwhile? Yeah, you could, you could do that. So uh, you need to have a, a buddy, obviously. Okay, um, so to, we have an assistant here who's going to... up around the back. Okay, so you're developing that Sigourney Weaver look. Thank uh, you very much. So, uh, so there are some ties at the back. So we're just experimenting with these masks and uh, the tie seems to have curled itself up there. We found the tie and it's, is it Velcro? Yeah. Okay, so we've Velcroed the back of your head. So that looks secure around your head. Okay, next. Next, uh, we'll take the, um, the belt. And this, uh, this goes around the back. So I'll put this on. And then if you can connect up for me. And is that a, just a push connection? It's a push and twist. Push and twist. Okay, so that seems fairly secure. So if you step away from us, Luke, so I can get the whole look at you. And then they'll turn it on with the button. So just step uh, a little bit further back. Okay, so we've got uh, we've got the look of you there. Okay, so I can hear it. And how, what does it feel like inside? Very nice. Yeah, there's right. cool air. You can feel it coming over the back. You can see it's inflated now. Right. It's coming over the back and it's going over my face and coming out through here. Right. So the exit point is this uh, this contraption here. Yeah. Okay, fantastic. So we need a nice tight seal around our face and then uh, the exit through there. And so on top of this, you then put your full PPP on, Indeed. PPE on. Indeed, okay, yeah. so, uh, so in the negative pressure ward, are you going to be doing double gowning, double gloving? 
Uh, yeah, so it would be exactly the same as if you were using the FFP3 mask uh, and the visor. Everything else is, is done exactly the same. Okay, so uh, why don't we assume that uh, we know how to put the PPP on, PPE on. How do we go about, at the end of our shift, taking this off? Well, of course, you have to have a, um, a body system uh, again. So the idea would be uh, that you would, uh, you would actually you'd keep this on until you came out and you'd keep the, the air flowing. And then you need to clean this with uh, a chlorine prep, um, clean the top of the mask, uh, and then you would uh, you'd then have assistance in removing it uh, uh, just in the same way that you would do with, say, for example, a visor. Can I turn you around for a second? Because when we're putting those uh, extra gowns on, I think we have to avoid blocking that filter. So I think the gown is going to be tied around that filter. Correct. Uh, so if it's tied around that filter, that's obviously exposed to the elements, uh, in which case that will also need a clean. How would you clean that? Correct. Again, that's, uh, that would need to be wiped down with chlorine, uh, chlorine preparation um, and, uh, and then uh, brought back here and covered and stored. Okay, so if I ask you to step back again a little bit, then uh, in... Uh, I, in this situation, let's imagine we've finished uh, the uh, disrobing uh, of the PPE, except for the hat, and we've got to the stage of removing this mask. So can you take us through how this is going to be removed? We have a buddy again, so how, how is it going to be removed? Yeah, so I asked my buddy to, to come and help me. So we turn off the, uh, the device and disconnect it. So the buddy would obviously have gloves on, and yeah. so okay, so we would disconnect the device. No, I'm sorry, the uh, just like yeah, I've done that, and then you disconnected the tube. So not as easy as it seems. So it's so it illustrates that it's quite a tight fit. So there'll be a twist up. That's it. There's a lock. Okay, fine, and we'll take that away. And we'll put that into a, an area for cleaning. Yep. So it won't actually go back in this spot here, but into a cleaning area. Correct. Okay, so Luke, if you step away from us so that we can see how the hood's going to be taken off. Okay, and so Gurdy, uh, how are you going to take this hood off him? So you're going to have gloves on. And this has been already wiped and cleaned. Okay. We'll just remove, undo the velcro. Yeah. And then just help him just bring it forward. Okay. And then down. Okay, and so it went over the top and down, and it hasn't touched him, and it hasn't touched you. Mm -hmm. What happens with this piece of plastic now? So um, uh, you probably want to wipe it again because while it's been on the head, you may not have been able to cover all areas. You'd wipe it again, uh, and then uh, you'd be able to. Be, what you would do after that is um, leave it to air dry. Uh, the the important thing is to have your own uh, personalized box uh, for for all of these these hoods. Okay, so the inside of this has obviously been contaminated by Dr. Howard. Uh, how do you clean the inside of it? Well, you don't need to clean the inside. It's single user, right? To use. Uh -huh. um, so that it's got... said, you know, it would you know it would seem reasonably hygienic to uh, to give it a, an internal clean. Uh, as well from time to time. I think after a long shift, it may get a bit sweaty in there, I suppose. There may be some debris, but okay, but it's, it's ventilating at 180 litres a minute, so yeah. it is being cleaned all the time. Uh, okay, so, but you, this is not one you're going to dip into a chlorhexidine or chlorine bath. I don't think you're going to completely dunk it underwater, no. Right, no, no. so it's a, it's a cleaning over the top, a yep. wipe down, yep. uh, to make sure that we've not got any contamination on it. Correct. Uh, okay, uh, I think that's a great demonstration. And so what we'll do is uh, make sure that the device is then stuck back to charge and it's recorded on that board that the time has come to charge it up again. And so if someone grabs equipment number one, they know that it's been charging for long enough so they don't run out halfway through their shift. Luke, Gurdip, thank you very much uh, for showing us how to do this.